Hi guys, welcome back to another quick tutorial on RabbitMQ. In our last video, we looked at some conceptual details around the competing consumer pattern. In this video, we are going to jump into the competing consumer pattern with some code and how to actually implement it using Python. I'll leave a link to the GitHub repository with the sample code in it uh, in the video description. If you're more interested in a version of this code in C Sharp, please stick around and look at the next video in this series as it will cover the exact same content, but from a C Sharp perspective. So we're gonna start here with the basic producer and consumer we wrote in a earlier video. And in order to achieve the competing consumer pattern, we are gonna to have to make some small changes to this. So we will start off in the consumer. And most of this will be very similar. So the way we connect uh, and create a channel should all be the same. The way we declare a queue will be the same. Um, and a lot of the other things around consuming basic off the queue will be more or less the exact same. We can even use the same queue, the letterbox queue that we created in an earlier video. So a couple of things that we can mess around and change. We'll change a little bit with the on message received method to basically simulate a background task taking some time to complete. The other thing we're gonna remove is we're gonna remove this auto ack equals true. So this will allow us to manually acknowledge a message when we've completed processing it. So for instance, if we pull a message off the queue and process it and do not acknowledge it, it will just go back onto the queue to be processed again by another consumer. However, if we acknowledge it when it's completed, that message is now done and the broker won't need to worry about it anymore. If we set auto act to true, this means that as soon as we pull a message off the queue, it will be automatically acknowledged and we won't have to manually do that. So in this case, we just wanna remove that bit of code from our basic consume method. And we will still use the same queue letterbox and the on message callback will be on message received our method up here. Another thing we want to do is we want to set that prefetch count equals one that we talked about in the previous video. So to do that, we just say channel and then dot basic QoS. So basic quality of service. And we just want to set the prefetch count equals one. So this means like we saw that each consumer will only process a single message at a time. And finally, let's change up our on message received method slightly. So to do this, we're gonna import two new things. We're gonna import time, and we're also gonna import random. So to simulate a background task, we're going to pause the execution of our on message received for a random amount of time. And this is gonna be just a random integer between one and five, say. And we're gonna save that in a variable called processing time. And then we're gonna say print received new message. So we'll just say print received the body. And then we'll give some indication of how long it will take to process. We'll take processing time to process. And then we wanna actually sleep for this time. So we wanna stop the processing. So time.sleep, and then pass in how long we wanna sleep for, which is our processing time. And then after we have finished our sleeping, we wanna actually acknowledge that we finished processing the message. So we can just say ch, which is our channel, and then basic ack. And then we need to pass this to the delivery tag of the message, which we can get from the method itself. So that's just basically uh, telling the broker which message we want to acknowledge. So we want to acknowledge the one we just received, not something else. And finally, we'll just say we finished processing the message. So that should do us from the point of view of our consumer. We'll have a look at the producer next and what we need to set up there in order to make it compatible with our basic competing consumers example. 
So now in our producer, and again, we have to make very few changes here. The connection code is all the same. The declaring of the queue is the same. The only thing we might want to change is the message that we publish and how we publish it. So in this example, we're just going to set up a infinite loop to publish a message every couple of seconds. So to do that, we'll just set up our infinite loop. So I'll just say while true. And then we'll define our message in that loop because we might want to change the message depending on what iteration we're on then publish it inside the loop itself. So basically publish, still want to publish to the default exchange. The routing key is still the same name of the queue and the body is still the body. We can still print send message, but one thing we want to do is after we send a message, we want to sleep for a kind of random amount of time. So again, like in the consumer, we're just going to import time and we're going to import random. And then we are going to sleep down here. So we'll say time.sleep. And then we say random dot random integer. And in this case, we might sleep for slightly less than we're doing in the consumer to kind of simulate a producer pushing messages onto the queue faster than they can be consumed. So say between one and three seconds. Another thing I'm going to quickly add is I'm just going to add an ID to our message so we can see what message number we're currently processing. So message ID, we'll start with message ID one, and then we will increment that on every loop. And we'll put that in our message as well. So we'll just say sending message ID and then give it the message ID itself. And another thing we wanna do is we wanna remove this connection close call here so we can keep our connection open while we publish each message onto the broker. Save that and in our consumer, I think we're good. I need to spell this right, DL delivery tag equals method dot delivery tag. So that should be fine. So let's open a terminal. Let's start our consumer. So Python consumer dot pi. That's started our consumer. Open a second terminal and start our producer. So Python producer dot pi. So we're sending message one and we should be sending a message kind of every three between one and three seconds. So we're on message four. If we look at our producer, it's just processing message four and we should see this start to fall behind our producer or our producer, sorry. So we're on sending message seven. Well, this is only processing message six still. We're on to message nine and our consumer is only on seven, now on eight. And see this is slowly, slowly creeping ahead. And if we leave this over time, this will get further and further ahead of the consumer because there's only one consumer consuming. If we have a look at our RabbitMQ management portal at the letterbox queue, we can see that we're starting to build up messages in the letterbox queue. So we've got four messages there already. And this again will run further and further behind where we were. So we're on 18 now, 19, while this is on 24. So let's stop both our consumer and our producers. I'm also going to purge the queue just to remove any messages that are hanging around in it. So I'm going to use the management UI to do that. So click on the letterbox queue and go to purge. So I should just clear out our queue. So we've got a clean queue for our next example. So we see we've just cleared out all the messages there. So they'll be lost, but it's just an example, so we don't mind. So let's go back and let's start two consumers at once. So not just a single consumer, but multiple consumers. So we'll start one consumer here. And in the other terminal window, we'll start a second consumer. So now we've got two instances of the consumer consuming. So open a third terminal window. And in this terminal window, let's start our producer. So we'll start pushing messages onto this one two, three, etc., And we can see here that we're starting to process our messages in the consumers here. So two, four, six, and the other one will be one, three, five, seven, and so on. 
And if we wait around for long enough, we'll actually see here that this consumer in process message 10, we might expect it if we didn't set the prefresh count to one to process 10, 12, 14. But in fact, because it was probably busy processing this long running message, which took six seconds to process, it actually skipped 12 and went to 13 while the other consumer handled that. Now, if we stop these queues and the producer, and we go into our consumer, and if we remove this line here where we set the prefetch count to one, so this removes the fair dispatch mechanism and goes back to the round robin, we save them and start our consumers again. started our two consumers this is just processing messages that were on the queue from last time that hadn't been finished processing so we've got two consumers now and the queue should be empty so if we start pushing and processing messages from the producer again we'll see we're one two and in this case no matter how long the messages take to process we should always see two four six eight and so on because the broker won't wait until a consumers finished processing its previous messages before sending it another one. So I hope you enjoyed this practical implementation in Python of the competing consumer pattern. In the next video, we're going to look at implementing this in C Sharp. But next, after that, we will be looking at how to implement the popular pub sub pattern in both Python and C Sharp, as well as having a conceptual overview of it. So if you enjoyed the video, please stick around for more RabbitMQ content. Don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel.